What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to take a look at different ways in which NVIDIA GPUs can speed up your workflow as a Python developer. So let us get right into it. All right, so the goal of this video today is to explore different ways in which NVIDIA and specifically NVIDIA GPUs can help us to accelerate our workflow as Python developers. So as you can see on the left side here, I have a couple of Jupyter notebooks prepared. We're going to go through them to see how NVIDIA can help us with that. And in the second part of this video, I'm going to do an interview or I have done an interview with Paul Graham from NVIDIA. He's the senior solution architect there and he will tell us about a webinar that can be very interesting to a lot of you guys. So make sure you watch the video until the end. And this video is also sponsored by NVIDIA. So let us get started by taking a look at QDF. QDF is a way to accelerate working with data frames. We have a compatibility with Pandas and also this was released quite recently with Polars. So what we can do is we can accelerate working with these data frames by utilizing NVIDIA GPUs, by using CUDA. So what we have here is we have a uh, data set, a taxi trips data set. It's the CSV file here from Kaggle. And as an example here, I load it as a simple pandas data frame, then I turn it into a QDF data frame, so into a GPU data frame. And what I do down here is I have a function basic operation. This is now just some example, you can do whatever you want here to test this yourself if you want to, I just drop the NAND values, I filter uh, for the entries to have at least uh, trip miles of above two. Um, so above two miles for a trip and then I group by payment type and I aggregate the miles with a mean function and the total amount of the trip so the price uh, with the sum function and then I sort the value. So this is arbitrary now it doesn't really matter why I do this but this is some operation that is done on this data set here. And this data set is not small, it's quite large. I don't know exactly how large it is, but you're going to see that we can achieve a speed up by doing this on a GPU using QDF here. So what I have here is I have the basic operation function. I run it here one time without measuring everything to do a so-called warm up so that we don't get any uh, distorted view of the uh, time needed because if you just do it uh, immediately, you might have some cold start problem where you take some additional time because you're running it for the first time. We want to actually measure how long the operation takes on the different uh, devices. So on a CPU and on a GPU. Here, if I run this now, I have one time the actually I need to run the code. So I load the data set. Um, and then I uh, define a function and run the function. I do it one time here with the DF. So with the pandas data frame, and one time with the GPU data frame. So with the uh, QDF data frame. And once this is done, take some time to load the data set because it's not small, as I said, um, I can print the results and they will differ from time to time. So if you run this multiple times, you're going to get different results. But you can see that it's much faster. So it has a speed up of 8.7, which is 771%. I can run it again, then probably I'm going to get some slightly different numbers here. Uh, in this case, even more speed up sometimes less. But you can see that using the GPU using QDF here leads to a massive speed up. Uh, and I can also check if these are actually the same. So we use the all close function for this because there are some slight differences that can happen because of how GPUs and CPUs handle floating point numbers. But all close checks for uh, a quality that's good enough. So they're basically the same values, but there are some imprecisions because it's uh, floating point arithmetic there. Um, for Polars, we do a similar thing here is even better because we don't even need to use QDF. So what we do here is we install Polars, we install QDF for Polars, you can go to the website to see how this is done. Um, and basically now QDF is part of Polars. So we just have to provide that we want to use the GPU in the Polars code to make it happen. What I do here is I import Polars, I load this as a lazy data frame. Um, then I can again display the data frame to look at it. And here now I have two functions, basically the same functions, um, the, the same function twice, but with one small difference in the collect statement in the end here, you can see that in the GPU function, I have this engine equals GPU. And this basically triggers QDF for Polars to work. And uh, long story short, if I run this now, and I measure the time difference, um, unless there is some cold start problem, I should see there you go, that there is a speed up. Now this, the speed up is not, uh, not as massive as for pandas, because Polars is already quite fast. But you can see that it's still much faster to run it 
uh, on the GPU. And of course, the more operations you do, the more complex uh, the operation is that you perform, the more speed up you're going to see here. And again, we can check for equality. And you can see that it's basically the same. So this is one way to accelerate our Python workflow by accelerating how we work with data frames. Uh, another thing that we do all, um, oftentimes implicitly, oftentimes also explicitly, is we use TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, with CUDA. So for example, here I have some PyTorch code. What we do is we have some high dimensional matrices and I have the CPU Tensor 1, the CPU Tensor 2, just random matrix of size 5000. And uh, then I basically take this and I put it to the GPU, I load it to the GPU, which gives me the GPU Tensor 1 and the GPU Tensor 2. And then what I do is I do some matrix multiplications, just uh, a couple of them to have some workload here. And on the CPU, I just do it with the CPU tensors. And then I take the result and I multiply it again with the CPU tensor two and so on. Um, and on CUDA on, on uh, the GPU, I do it with the GPU tensors. Uh, basic idea. But when I run this, I think did I do warm up? I don't, I don't do a warm up here, right? Let me just run this again. Yeah, but you can see it's much, much faster on the CPU, it takes 1.5 seconds on the GPU 0.08 seconds. So that's something that we can do with PyTorch. And also, of course, this happens, usually, you always train your models if you can, um, on the GPU. So here, for example, I have a simple convolutional neural network, two convolutional layers, uh, one max pooling layer and two fully connected layers. And basically, I load the MNIST data set important here, I specify that the number of workers is eight, maybe you can even specify 16. The reason I do that is because otherwise, we might have a bottleneck here. So the speed up can be limited, because maybe the GPU wants to work very fast, or can work very fast. But the data set uh, is not loaded fast enough. So we want to use multi threading here to load the data quickly. Uh, and then basically, I have the training done on the CPU here and the training done on the GPU using CUDA again. And I'm not going to run this now. But I want to show you here the difference is that on the CPU 11.87 seconds on the GPU 3.02 seconds, of course, can vary a little bit, but you can see a massive speed up here. And of course, the larger the model, the more it can benefit from uh, matrix multiplication and parallelization on the GPUs. Same works for TensorFlow. Um, I think I'm not going to run the code here as well. But same idea, we have uh, a convolutional neural network, we load uh, a data set, and then we perform the training process with a CPU and the training process with the GPU. So here I specify the different devices. And you can see on the CPU 37.01 seconds on the GPU 4.92 seconds. So this is also accelerated by Nvidia GPUs. By the way, these numbers can vary depending on your GPU, I have a 3060 Ti, which is not the best GPU that you can get on a desktop. If you have something like a 4090, of course, this is going to be even faster. So of course, it depends on your GPU and machine learning is oftentimes done on a 40s h 100s and so on. So on server GPUs, uh, specifically used for for machine learning purposes. So then you have even larger speed ups. Uh, and finally, one more thing that I wanted to show you is number also supports CUDA number, I already have a video on number on this channel. And the basic idea is just in time compilation. So we compile certain sections of the code. Here, for example, we have matrices, and we do element wise or actually erase. Um, we do element wise addition, not matrices, these are arrays. Um, and we do that one time in pure Python, we do that one time with just in time compilation for the CPU and number also has CUDA .jit, So just in time compilation uh, for the GPU, um, where we access the individual threats, and they determine the indices. So we can use these three functions, which do the same thing, they just do element wise addition of two arrays, two large arrays. Um, and they do it in pure Python in compiled Python for the CPU and in compiled Python for CUDA. And when I run this, you can see I have the pure Python time 0 0.7159, the uh, just in time compilation for the CPU 0 0.2907. And for CUDA, uh, we do a warm up here before that again to uh, get an accurate estimation 0 0.0003 three seconds. Now, this would not be exactly as quick or as fast if we also include the transfer time. So that will be a factor. So maybe the speed up will not be 2000 
859, uh, 51 times faster, but it will still be much faster. So this is also a way in which we can accelerate our workflow using NVIDIA GPUs. All right, so we took a look at a couple of different ways in which we can speed up our workflow using NVIDIA GPUs. Now for this video, I also teamed up with NVIDIA and interviewed their senior solutions architect, Paul Graham. He's holding a Python webinar on October 9th, which can be very interesting to a lot of you guys. So let us hear what he has to say. First, I asked Paul how NVIDIA can make the life of developers easier. So the first question is, NVIDIA has been working with the Python developer community for quite some time already. What would you say, how can NVIDIA make the life of Python developers easier? Yeah, so uh, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things there. So Python developers, people are writing code for, for Python. Um, the way that NVIDIA can make their lives easier is to make it as easy as possible to, for them to take advantage of the GPUs. Um, but also, uh, we have a philosophy of trying to meet developers where they want to get involved. So um, we have these high level libraries and things which make it easy, but we also give people the power to program directly for the GPUs themselves. Uh, and it's up to the developers, you know, how low they want to go there. Uh, and so that's going to make the life of Python developers easier. But also, I think it's nice to think about how we can make the life of Python users easier. And for me, that's making them not have to wait. Um, you know, if anything the Python developer or user is doing, that is they're having to wait for results, they're waiting for their analysis to come through, then GPUs from NVIDIA are going to really help them with that. And, you know, they can see things speed up insignificantly and it can maybe change the way they, they, they do their job. Then I wanted to know which Python-based frameworks are supported by NVIDIA. So there are many of these. Um, some of the more famous ones are from the worlds of AI and deep learning. So you think of things like TensorFlow and PyTorch. Um, we have containerized versions of those frameworks freely available, and they have all the latest GPU optimizations in there. So all the latest library improvements for the particular hardware that you'll be using. Um, also within those containers, you get you know, scripts, example scripts of how to use them and also support for multiple GPUs as well. So that's really useful. There's lots of domain specific frameworks too. We've got things like Rapids, which is aimed at data scientists. Uh, we've got Isaac for roboticists, Clara for uh, healthcare specialists. Um, so there's many, many different ones of these and uh, they're all uh, have so support, uh, they're either built on top of Python or they have support built in for, for using Python. And they're built on top of our performance library. So they will take advantage of the hardware and, and run very, very efficiently. Another thing that I wanted to know is if there exists a Python interface that allows us to program directly on the hardware, directly on the GPU, similar to CUDA. And is there also a way to program directly on the hardware or for the hardware on the NVIDIA platform, similar to CUDA, maybe in Python? Yeah, absolutely. So as, as you say, CUDA is our way of programming for GPUs. It was originally uh, an API uh, based in C, uh, the C language, but now encompasses the whole ecosystem of the frameworks, the libraries, and support for many other languages. So we have the traditional languages like C++ and Fortran, and of course we now have support for Python as well. And again, you know, we try and stick to this philosophy of meeting the developer where they're comfortable. So we've got libraries such as QNumeric, uh, which is targeted as a sort of drop-in replacement for NumPy. So if you know your, uh, your view viewers are uh, using NumPy, NumPy, then QNumeric is going to be a GPU version of that. Um, but we also provide ways of having more control. So we, uh, there's a, a thing called Number, that's N-U-M-B-A. Um, that allows you to annotate things like uh, your universal functions in Python and then get them to run on GPU. It allows you to manage the data movement and it even allows you to write CUDA-like code so you can program directly to the features of the GPU. So as a developer, it's up to you, you know, at which level you want to engage. Um, you know, and I'd always say you know, start at the high level, then if you need more control, you want to try and get the maximum performance, then maybe look at going down to the CUDA level. I then asked him about the Python webinar and who should watch it. Another interesting thing is you're holding a Python webinar on the 9th of October. Who should care about it and who should watch it? Okay, so I would say anyone who's using Python and is having to wait for things to happen. Um, you know, the whole point of using uh, accelerated devices like GPU is to get your answers more quickly uh, or, you know, finish your training of your neural network more quickly, finish your simulation more quickly. So anyone who's having to wait for these things to happen, then, you know, this may be of interest to them. And you don't need to be a GPU expert at all. Uh, as I say, there's a few different levels you can engage with using GPUs, and we will touch on all of those at the, in this webinar. And finally, I asked him for those who are interested in benefiting from the acceleration of Python code using NVIDIA GPUs, what's the easiest way to get started? 
Well, first of all, see if there's an application or framework that's already GPU accelerated, and hopefully you can just download, install that, and if there's GPU hardware on your system, it will make use of it. So that's the easiest way. Um, then look to see if there's any of the performance libraries. So we have the linear algebra libraries for your transforms, random number generators, all these different things, and uh, neural network libraries. Uh, again, they all have Python interfaces, so you can maybe start using those. But of course, if you find that there isn't a library or there isn't an application or framework already there, then you might want to start programming yourselves. And uh, we'll, we'll see in the webinar, I'll go into these in more detail, but things like the drop-in libraries like QNumeric uh, or indeed using numbers to start programming directly to the GPU itself. So, you know, there's all these different levels uh, to start, start getting, making use of the GPUs. So that was the interview with Paul. If you want to check out the webinar, you can click on the link in the description down below. It will get you to the webinar page and there you will find all the information that you need. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.